Okay, we want to begin right at 1.30. We, um, we hope we can do this in an hour to get to have a couple of co-presenters. Just a little disclaimer, what we're talking about today, particularly a couple of the technologies that we're using in Carlo High School, I just want to say that it took years and years to get to this point. This is what happened overnight. There's two kind of interesting things that we're using this year, satellite technology to go live from afar, and this, this technology called, uh, CNN uh, brands it the magic wall, we're, we're flying around the magic window. But for years, we, we sort of faked it. I've always had this obsession, uh, and I teach the broadcast program in the I've always had this obsession with getting students out of the studio, out on the campus, or even out in the community, to report back live. And we tried it every which way for a while. We were taking 500 feet of Cat5 cable and <coughs> turning it out, which was cool until the, the bell rings, and now we have 3,000 students, and we're trying to roll it back in. Um, so that was not so effective. And then I saw one time that the Chinese company was selling a, a wireless audio video system. So we invested a couple hundred dollars in that. It was good for about 50 feet, which I thought was really cool. And then we figured out if we put tinfoil on the, on the uh, antenna, we could get them 25 feet. Uh, and so now we are really, we're, we're, we're broadcasting from 75 feet away from our studio. You could have yelled and we could have heard them on the microphone. But the, the idea is that it's, it began with, with, a, with a, an obsession to, to push the envelope. And then eventually the technology caught up to us. And you're going to hear a little, a little bit this morning about how we're using satellites, which is pretty cool, um, in the magic window. This is totally student run. I just play the videos, and I'm going to pass it off now to one of my producers, Kelsey Beekman. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelsey Beekman. I'm a junior in the program. And so, first of all, thank you all for attending this session and getting to talk to us and let us talk to you guys. Um, so, first of all, we're a daily live broadcast from Carlsbad, California. We're, we're all students in Carlsbad High School. And our daily live program reaches a, an audience of about 2,800 students and staff via a closed circuit that we use a system called VBRIC to send our show to the classroom smart boards that are all throughout the campus. And we use the school's network to do this. Um, we are also carried live on Time Warner Cable and AT&T. And so the members of the community can also watch if they're like our parents or anybody else in the community that isn't in the school network can watch it on their own time. Um, so second of all, we would love for this, for, the, for this session to be very interactive. So please interrupt at any time if you have any questions. Um, the format will be like this. Each of us will talk about a component of our show and occasionally we will show a video clip to, get, to give you guys a little bit of a visual representation and, um, of what we're describing or what we're talking about. And then about, just like Mr. Green said, about five years ago, Carlsbad High School was rebuilt and we were able to move, to move out of our old studio that had no air conditioning, no heat, very little space, and very minimal electrical outlets. And now we have our new studio that we love very much and that we designed ourselves. So here's a video for, to start it off that is our new studio. you a very brief overview of our studio facility. We begin each morning here in the newsroom where we discuss previous broadcasts, current broadcasts, events that we may be covering, and anything else relevant to the program. The studio is equipped with a full editing lab. Each computer contains Final Cut X in the Adobe production suite. Students can use these computers to edit their stories, research, find upcoming events, and much more. Helping students produce their best work, the newsroom is furnished with four completely soundproof editing bays. These are perfect for editing stories and recording voiceovers. As our program grows, so is the need for equipment. On any given night, we can have up to 12 teams of students out producing stories. So this room might get pretty hectic during the period as students are trying to check out cameras. A couple years ago, we switched from traditional camcorders to Canon DSLRs. Students now use Zoom mics and A-Lab mics to capture sound. This is the mechanical heart and soul of our program, the control room. We have TriCaster number one, used for rolling in stories during the live show. TriCaster number two, used for switching. And each camera in the studio has its own dedicated graphics machine, as well as our audio mixer. All in all, it takes about 10 students to engineer the broadcast, and yes, it gets pretty busy. But hey, the way we see it, it's the most important room in the house. We are really, really grateful for our studio. It measures to be about 900 square feet with an 18-foot ceiling and a lighting grid that drops to about 14 feet. 
we run the show with three cameras on dolly wheels and have an additional camera on our crane. Our newest addition to the live program is a system that we modified. We call it our fly cam. This camera is operated on a three axis gimbal and the shots are dynamic and fluid. We still use homemade teleprompters. We can make these for about $200 each. As much as we appreciate our studio, that's not what makes a student broadcast compelling. The heart and soul of a high school broadcast comes from great storytelling and the dedication of the students and the staff. And that is the topic of today's workshop. Hello, my name is Riley Fells. So our goal throughout this session that we have today is to talk about some strategies that we use to keep the daily broadcast compelling and interactive throughout the show. So we all know that those daily announcements can be a little boring once in a while, but we tend, like, we want to make them interesting as much as possible. So we try to get the audience involved in our um, session, our interviews that we have. So a theme that we're going to be talking about is keep your show important. If you can make your broadcast a vital part of your school day and school culture, we feel that your, your program will have a greater buy-in from the students and staff. Now, we realize that not all of these strategies will fit your broadcast model and bell schedule, but we are hoping that you're able to provide some of these ideas and modify some of them. So our program is primarily run by the students. After the morning meeting, Mr. Green and Ms. Leone turn it over to us and we begin preparing for the daily broadcast. Here's a short video that explains each morning and how we set up before we turn it over. Before we get to this moment, there's a moment where we all get together yeah, just to create a masterpiece. Yeah. The masterpiece being a 12 minute show every day yeah, sure. without fail. Go for it. How do we do it? Just, just go on. Walk go into go our program. 90% of the students in this class started as middle school. Because there's not enough. So they begin in middle school doing weekly shows, in some cases daily yeah. shows. So by the time they get to the high school, they're, they're pretty good. Over this. And it's totally student driven, it's their shot. I, I don't think people realize that at 7.30 we don't have a broadcast. They're meeting for about a half an hour, and then they have one hour to put together a program from scratch. With Mr. Green here to guide us, we also have student producers here every morning dedicating themselves to have a successful show. At 7.30 we come into the classroom and Mr. Green has a meeting with us and he'll tell us any news or anything that we need to know. And then we'll go through our rundown with him um, just to make sure that we have everything we need. And during that rundown, um, we have certain people who are designated to be live each day. And so out of those, I need to decide who goes live with which guest. And after that, uh, Mr. Green pulls Popsicle 6 to determine who has what job. And as people decide what job they want to do for that day, I'll write them up on the board so everyone knows which ones we've already done. Each student is required to create an investigative feature every three weeks. Roughly about every three weeks, we have a hard deadline for packages or stories um, on people at Crossbound High School or students that are involved in sports or activities. So we kind of showcase their talent um, on air. So every three weeks when we have the turn-in package day, um, I'm a content producer, so I basically kind of overlook the stories and give the grade. From making packages to preparing for shows, it takes hard work and dedication. From behind the scenes, I'm John Zakar. Can I ask you questions? Of course. Sorry, I just had to interrupt any time. Yeah. What's the schedule? So you start more on, you guys have a block schedule? Or yes. We have, we have a block schedule. So every day we have periods one, three, and five, or two, four, and six. And so we have two periods, one and two. And so each class is two hours long, unless it's a short day, then it's an hour and a half. And so basically we start the day off, like, like the video said, we started off with a meeting where we discuss what we're going to have on, what daily announcements, what interviews, what package, and then we'll, Mr. Green will give us the rundown, and then from there we'll start creating the show and we'll make the opening, and then we'll get ready for the rehearsal and the live show. Are, are you folks receiving CTE and VAPA credit? Yes. Yes, they get they get year one and year two they get uh, half fine art and then year three year four they get G. How about for journalism? I love that. No. Yeah, no. Give, me, give me another year. We'll get that. <laughs> we're going to try to uh, maybe, maybe do Q and A toward the end. My newer script said we got to we're going to rush through this, so probably we'll do a Q and A. 
Uh, um, I'm Chris Weedman. And I'm Jillian Jordan. So, um, like Riley said before, um, you guys saw the video, we do have daily announcements every day, but those daily announcements tend to get a little bit boring when you guys are in like the classrooms watching us. So, we try and figure out ways in order to keep the audience's attention, and one of those ways are live guests and stories. Yeah, and how we um, try to mix it up is what we call the rule of four. And now what the rule of four is, is a combination of live guests and packages that equals four. So whether it's one package and three live guests, or two packages, two live guests, it's all good as long as it equals four. We've discovered this mixes the show up, uh, gets more people involved when they're watching the show, and people enjoy it more. And while we're talking about packages, uh, every student here works on a quota system. So we work in pairs of two for every package, and we have to turn them in every three weeks. So with the amount of students we have, that brings in a lot of packages, and it brings in enough to where we can air at least one or two amazing shows every day. Yeah, so um, with those packages, we have student content producers, which we have to actually pitch our story. So we get an idea, and we're like, okay, well, we want to pitch this. So we have to make sure it's okay with our student content producer. Once we get the green light from them, we go ahead, we go in, and we produce our story. A good story takes about five to ten hours to produce in all. We have um, a rule where we have um, a six-second headshot of our interviewee. Then we cover it. Once it gets max six seconds, we cover that with B-roll. We tend that this finds that it keeps the audience um, a lot more engaged. Um, it takes five to ten hours to produce a whole piece and producing stories all in all we do this all on the weekend and after school and so we spend our time doing our li daily, sh daily life show right. yeah. and we're rolling the equipment on live guest turns yeah quite yes so quite well, like we discovered that bringing on live guests really messes up the show bringing on live guests it kind of has the audience, it, we bring in clubs, sports teams, um, students of which we have air packages on, so we make a package then if we see, okay, well maybe we want to bring them on, like Kelsey right here, we did a package on him, so just kind of keeps the audience more engaged and like we like to highlight the events and like um, certain events, certain games and stuff that's going on with the school and or students at our school as well. Yeah, and CHS TV does play a huge part in the popularity of events at our school, so we have so many clubs that um, host meetings at lunch, and so many people wouldn't know specifically when and where if it wasn't for CHS TV, bringing on the club, talking about it, and sporting events. Uh, big games that we have, we bring on the athletes, they talk about it, get the school hyped up, so it plays a big part. Yeah, we try to have a variety of everything, so not just we don't focus more on sports, but we focus on everything, so Red Cross Club or Spanish Club. Just a whole variety for all of our students to be able to engage in everything. The montage of I'm Kelsey in the studio. All right, and we're back with Kelsey, obviously. So Kelsey, what are we going to be making for Carl's Vegas? We're just going to make some little sandwiches with some lettuce and some ham. But it was one post on Facebook that started it off, and then it just spread around. Now, what's interesting about this is the reason why it spreads is people look at it, and they share it. They don't go, is this true or not? Um, so I see you got these pins here. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, over the year there are like these orientation weekends with other exchange students. Um, the music overall, uh, the festival was really fun, um, but there were some issues with parking and transportation. Hey, what about you? I was jumping with joy. How do you feel about the outcome? Uh, I felt pretty betrayed by America and disappointed by their actions, truly. Uh, upset. <laughs> what, what were you most upset about? Well, for my friends in different ethnicities, it's scary to have someone who like hate so much in their speeches. What do, what do we chop liver out here? This is, do you guys think you're so hot at broadcast? Here you go, Felix. This is your show, my friend. Take it away. We're out, guys. Let's go. Uh, roll. <laughs> what do I do? All right, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just screwing with you. I'm just messing with you. I wouldn't do that to you. You guys did great. That was awesome. Breathe. Take a minute. You guys okay? Now, how did you get this bike? I mean, it looks like it's can you? Obviously not a new bike, so who gave this to you? Well, I heard from a friend and it's at a garage sale in Carlsbad, so I had to go check it out, and so I got it for a really good price, and I'm stoked, and I'm just like slowly working on it. All right, first off, Bronson, we got a CAF game tonight. What are the details? Yeah, it's at 7, and it's a home game. Sounds good. Now, Jack, who are we playing? What are some of the American stereotypes you guys have heard? Uh, we know this. America stereotype with guns and big burgers and... <laughs> Are they true? Mm, I don't think, um, maybe. 
Um, Alana, tomorrow you guys have a really big competition going on. Can you explain to me what's going on? Uh, yes, yeah, so basically it is like Jeopardy, but for marine science questions, um, teams are asked questions. Listen to me, people. Do not hold the camera vertically. I have a really big TV, and you're only giving me a little bit of screen. Turn this up. Uh, I was working, I was working at Pixar Hut. Uh, about three weeks later, I found that same Pixar Hut. I was kidnapped and brought to San Diego, and uh, I was victim of... I became victim of what you may call as child sex trafficking, commercial sex exploitation of children, uh, human trafficking. There's so many names for what happened. Hey everyone, my name is Ray Heija Cooper and I'm a sophomore at Carlsbad High School and I've been in the program for about Stay two years here. now. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys today about one of the policies we have here at CHSTV and that's what that's where we want all the people who are involved in our broadcasting program to learn virtually every aspect of our broadcast. It's really easy to, you know, get one job, get really good at it, you know, be very comfortable in it and never, you know, expand your skill set. And in today's professional world, often reporters are asked to edit and shoot their own stories. So we want to make sure that you know the people who are coming through our program that they know all of these, uh, they know all the different jobs that we have to offer, and we have a lot of jobs to offer. Um, so we have a special uh, high-tech way, not really, um, in picking the jobs every morning, and it gives each student an equal opportunity uh, to, uh, yeah, get jobs in the morning. At CHSTV, we have a policy that every student should know every aspect of the Daily Lens broadcast. Everyone reports, anchors, fills, and edits, as well as masters all the equipment that helps run our daily show. To keep everything fair and organized, we use something called the Popsicle Stick Method. At the end of our morning meetings, Mr. Green pulls Popsicle Sticks with our names on them, and the student chosen at random picks the job they would like to do for the show that day. In order to stay true to our policy, we're not allowed to do the same job more than four times in a grading period. This method really works because it keeps everything random and completely fair. Good afternoon, I'm uh, Connor Hannon. I'm one of the executive producers of CHS-TV. And, um, we really think at CHSTV that it's important to get our reporters out of the studio. So the more we can do this, the better. Um, we actually have three ways of doing this. We have the a system called the DeGero. We have a Teradec. And recently, we've uh, partnered with Viasat to get satellite technology. So two years ago, we uh, started talking to Viasat. Um, we explained to them why we want to go out, to the out of the studio, into the community, off campus, just anywhere that we can to make it more interesting. And we negotiated for them to install and train us on their satellite uh, technology, the Exceed system. And through that, we've been able to go off campus. We've gone to local schools. Um, we've gone to the parks and pools uh, just to make sure that we get uh, everywhere that we need to. All right, good afternoon. My name is Dustin Rupp, and I'm the overall live remote producer. And we typically try to use these systems like three to four times a week. Um, sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. It just depends on how our week is going. Uh, when we use the satellite technology, it is absolutely cost-free for us with our partnership from Viasat. But when we do use the DeGero, it is essentially like four cellular modems inside of it. So it's like AT&T, Verizon, et cetera. And so we pay for that by the minute. And right now we're looking for a live remote sponsor. So like that would be like we're sending it to so-and-so live out with this and this segment is brought to you by and the sponsor there. So um, yeah, now we're going to roll this clip on how some examples of how we use the Viasat DeGero technology. And I think the first one is live streaming. All right, so basically uh, we're live streaming the men's varsity soccer game right now. They're playing against Fallbrook. And outside the window over there, we have our satellite provided from Viasat, which is basically providing us with an internet connection from a satellite in orbit right now. And we've just connected to the satellite, and we're getting internet now. We're switching out of the wired connection that we get with Carlsbad, and we're going to go into uh, the internet connection that we're receiving from the satellite. So it's a really big deal. We're going to see how it works, and hopefully it does pretty good. Yeah, so this is actually us setting up on campus. This is one of our two options to go live from the from um, our show. And so this is us setting up the satellite. We have to aim it to a certain degree of elevation and to a certain satellite up in the sky. And as long as we can see the southwest sky, we are okay to go live on the studio. And then this goes up to the sky and comes back down to our studio. But this is our second option, which is go live from the football stadium. And this is our satellite on top of there. We take a cord down and we go live from there, and then everything goes back to the studio satellite up here, and this sends everything live to the control room. 
And here's a DeGeneres setup. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Matthew Zorro. I'm here live with the DeGeneres Live for ASP. Oh, yeah. uh, this thing is an amazing piece of equipment. It can go live from anywhere in North America. It connects to four different modems. It goes to yeah. AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon. It's, it's amazing. And right here, today, we are live with yeah. the, the ASP. Yeah, so like I said, we use, we use this system um, occasionally. We try to pay for it. And um, I forget what I'm... And now examples of this. So now we have some samples. Yeah. Thanks to our friends at Viasat, we're able to send our camera crews out into the world to report back live. The satellite is actually 27,000 miles up in space. This morning, we're live on campus from the football stadium. Jillian Jordan has the rundown for the rest of homecoming week. Jillian, what's up? We will be attending all of our classes, but don't worry, Lancers. We will have dismissal at 12.08. Immediately following dismissal, we'll head on over to the... Assembly. What is up, Carlsbad? I am live via satellite here at Internology alongside Dan Hannon. So, Dan, can you tell the people what Internology is? Yeah, hi, good morning, everyone. We are a custom software uh, development shop. 44% of teens have at least one friend who overdoses on uh, painkillers or uses them. And uh, good morning, Lancers. Uh, I'm Logan Welsh, and through the power of live TV, I'm here uh, in the quad before you now. And uh, <laughs> you can see there's quite a quite a spectacle going on behind me, and it's important to talk about uh, what's going on here for Red Ribbon Week. So what's up, Carlsbad? I'm Ryan Mankin, and I'm here live in the Best Buddies, thanks to this new technology c 2 cv has just received. And, uh, so as you can see right now, it was actually a really beautiful day. The sun is shining. There's not that many clouds in the sky. But as hey, Carl's about I'm here with uh, John and Isaiah from <laughs> ASB to talk about this school's 60th anniversary. So I know you guys have. I am here live via satellite inside of Joe and Nelson's renovated bus, or as they like to call our delight. So some of you might know from a story we aired a little while back that these guys are taking us on an awesome summer trip. So Nelson. <clears throat> Uh, hi guys, my name is Charlie Rouse. I am a senior in the program and I will be talking to you about show openings. So first off, show openings are hugely important for our show because it kind of primes the audience for the whole show. We got to come, it's about 10 minutes long. And our shows being every day in the morning, students may not be paying attention yet. <coughs> Teachers always put it on, students may be on their phones or talking. So right when the opening hits, it kind of focuses their attention in. Uh, mostly what our opening consists of is uh, high energy shots, quick cuts, and then uh, hopefully some music that the audience can live with. Uh, shots are usually of our community, our school, and lately what's been catching on is uh, behind the scenes shots in our studio. We've got this new steady cam that I really like to use for the openings, and uh, here's an example. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Matthew Zorn, and uh, I'm here to talk to you guys about the stories that we produce here at CHSTV. Now, I know we already sort of talked about this earlier in the workshop, but I'm here to more elaborate on this. So, stories are produced about every three weeks. Uh, we do. We are encouraged to work with partners, so we build as a team, and we build as storytellers of the modern age. 
So pretty much uh, before you can produce these stories, uh, the teams will do what's called the pitch sheet process. And basically what this process is is where we take a sheet of paper called the pitch sheet and we uh, pretty much describe what our story is, who it's about, you know, what it's on, and what is really the, uh, the uh, story <coughs> behind this person. And uh, what we'll do is we'll that team will turn this pitch sheet into one of our content producers for the show, and they will decide if it's green lit to go on and be produced. Um, now, of course, not every story does get green lit. Um, there are some ideas that will, you know, pass through and they won't be accepted, but most of the time they are. So, uh, uh, to talk about more about content producers, here's Lynn. Hey guys, I'm Lynn Coach, and I'm one of the content producers for our program. So my main job is basically to look over all the stories and kind of see like how people can improve on their stories or whether or not they should get an A or B. So basically, um, our process is that if a story does not get an A or gets a B or C, we will not schedule it to air. Instead, we will um, give feedback to the student. We have a paper where we'll write out, okay, there were shaky shots or the audio was bad. And we hope with this process, students will feel motivated to change the story or go back to refilm some of the story or interview shots. And then in that way, people can improve their grade from like a B or C to an A. And then we will, when it's ready, we will schedule it to air. So it's also really important. We usually have two content producers working together. So we have um, various kind of opinions and people looking at stories and really making sure we have the best content for our program. So here um, is a clip of two content producers working together and kind of overlooking a story. <laughs> All right. That was a really good story. I liked how it's like it had it embodied the whole like journalism badge of courage type of thing. Like yeah. it takes a lot of courage to do a story on something like that. And right. I don't think anybody's really ever talked about that because it was like it's such a sensitive topic. So, yeah. so, like, I think that was very cool of her to do. I definitely liked the writing to it. It wasn't like yeah. typical or anything like that. She wrote really well to it. I think it was good. However, there was like a spike in the audio uh, yeah. point. Yeah, there was like, a, a puff on the mic and then um, some of the shots were shaky, so she used like a stabilizer, yeah. except it like, distorted the image. So Also, like, I feel like it was kind of hard for him to get B-roll because, you know, it's kind of a... So giving people feedback is just really helpful for the students because they learn from their mistakes and then we just grow as journalists. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Olivia Kelly and I'm going to talk about our magic window. So um, we were lucky enough to work with the Carlsbad-based company Internology. Like Mr. Green said before, um, they created CNN's magic wall. And with the help of their head producer, who wrote us a special software, and we also got a grant to buy a 4K monitor, we were able to create what we call our magic window. So um, this has definitely helped. It's been a game, ch game changer for us, totally. Um, we have students ready every day. They prepare a presentation for the magic window. They bring in images, high-resolution images, to basically just talk about whatever topic, topic they want to, breaking news, sports, anything that they feel is important. And yeah, we're always looking for different ways to tell stories, so this has definitely helped us broaden our horizons, and overall, it's just been a great addition to our program. So here's a few examples from our recent live broadcast. <laughs> My name is Nicholas Zavarecki, and I have something quite amazing to share with you. So NASA recently discovered by the Aquarius constellation, about 39 light years away, a dwarf star that they have dubbed Trappist One. Now this dwarf star is 2,000 times dimmer than our normal sun. Clinton is currently at 259, so if Florida does support Clinton, she will be winning with 288. And while you may not know his name, you may know some of his films, such as Black Hawk Down, Gladiator, and Schindler's List. He invited the students to travel all the way from San Diego to Zagreb, Croatia, where the film was premiered. And Nick Lamarca. This film was a little bit like the high school Oscars, and we really just wanted to congratulate them on their big award and other nominations. These are the Boston Dynamic Robots Atlas. It's completed with legs and arms to make it look a little bit more human-like. What's really cool about the Atlas is that it can go out in, outside, and if you push it down, you can get right back up again in a matter of seconds, so it won't stop without sight. Moving on, these are the Boston Atlas's five robots. These Boston Dynamics just came out with a new... So basically, these citizens will be flying in a, a spaceship that will, Elon Musk says, will go for about a week, and it will not be landing on the moon. It will be orbiting the moon. And it's big because we'll see in the future it will become a more common practice. Awards accidentally give out the wrong envelope, causing Moonlight to not get the award at first and La La Land to come up. 
So that's a big controversy. A but video went viral of an iPhone 7 exploding. And as you can see here, the whole left side of the phone was ruptured. And uh, the user reported that while she was charging it, it began smoking and squeaking. And just earlier this year, an iPhone 7 exploded when it was still in its original casing. Lauren, this is a map of Canada. Can you really quick circle where you guys' school is and where you guys live? Sure thing. So we're uh, about there, just under Toronto, across the lake, very close to the U.S., very close to Niagara Falls as well. Awesome. And What's up, Carlsbad? I'm Peter Canales, here to talk about a rather touchy topic. So if you don't know, the past couple of days, a new president that was elected to a major Western power, of, I am, of course, of talking about Gunny Johansson. Now, Johansson, uh, he has a bias against pan pineapples on pizza. Now, <laughs> This is what I want to mention beforehand is if you can do this before we got this thing, we would taste, take an iPad, clamp it to a regular 42 inch monitor, and do all of the pinching and swiping and telestration on the iPad. So there are cheap workarounds to, to do this kind of storytelling. Hi, everyone. I'm Brooklyn, and I'm going to be talking about CHSTV funding and CHSTV films. So for the most part, our program is completely self funded, and we have a few different ways to get the money to support our program. The first way is we make and sell corporate videos. And depending on the client, we charge around $1,000 to $3,000 per finished minute of each video. So that helps a lot. We also do f just like regular fundraising a couple nights a year. We will go to a local restaurant and they will give us the proceeds for what we, out of the people that we bring in that night. And certain restaurants give us up to 50% of the proceeds that they get. And that's amazingly generous of them. Um, we also have sponsors. So some of these uh, restaurants that we do fundraisers at and some local businesses sponsor some awards and Logan is going to be talking about that later. But that's awesome, the community gets involved with um, helping our program. And the biggest fundraiser we do all year is the CHSTV garage sale. So for a few weeks we ask all the students and their families to donate things they're willing to get rid of. And then we um, advertise it on our show for a few weeks and then we have a huge garage sale. And everything we don't sell goes to Goodwill, but we do sell more than we don't and I think this year or last year we broke a record with how much money we made, but every year we get around uh, $4,000 from the four hours that we work at the garage sale, and so that's awesome. Helps our program a lot. Um, and then our broadcasting uh, program is a 501 charity, and so the Parent Booster Club and the Board of Directors work together and they help us set up our fundraisers, and they're awesome. They are the backbone of all of this uh, money that we get for our program. And the last way is the films that we make. And so the films are the most <coughs> consistent income um, for our program. And but the thing is, we don't make the films uh, for the money. We make them because we find topics that are important to us and that resonate with us. And um, we do films on that. However, the money is awesome for our program. It is the most consistent um, income for us. And here's a little video explaining how that works. Hi, I'm Nick Lamarca. Now, there are three components to our broadcasting program. Primarily, we produce a live show each day, and that's what we're going to talk to you guys about. We also produce live, multi-camera sports broadcasts. Now, these programs cost money, but they do not necessarily generate an income. Our third component is our documentary film program. The films provide the income that helps keep the broadcasting program financed. We call our documentary component CHSTV Films. Our first film is called We Must Remember. It tells the story of 16 CHSTV students who spent 18 months discovering the Holocaust while making a film on the Holocaust. With a budget of $330,000, we were able to shoot in four European countries where it visited multiple concentration camps, interviewed German students in German high schools, and sat down with survivors of the Holocaust who shared their horrific experiences with us. We Must Remember was premiered in Hollywood, aired on PBS, and has been translated into multiple languages. Our second film is called One in Seven. While making this film on hunger, we discovered that local military families were lining up at food banks because their salaries were inadequate to support soldiers with children. Seven billion. That's how many people we share the earth with, and over 315 million are in the U.S. and counting. Our newest film, clearly our biggest project to date, premieres on May 1st in Washington, D.C. It is called Invisible Threat. This documentary investigates the safety of vaccinations. The film took two years to produce and it has received endorsements and support from every major medical organization in the nation, including the Centers for Disease Control and the Assistant Surgeon General of the United States. My husband and God has helped. Help me. There were probably 14 or 15 people there by the time his dad had gotten there. I called him and told him where we were and he had gotten to the emergency room and 
he went on the side of the table and Ryan was saying, I'm cold and Bob covered him and began to rub his face and my dad, my, my feet are freezing. And Bob just kept telling him, Daddy loves you. Baby boy, Daddy loves you. Ryan began to vomit blood, pure blood. We began to see blood coming from his ears and his tears, his mouth, everywhere. He was turning blue. He was just bleeding everywhere. A few minutes later, we heard time of death, 11.53. words I would ever hear in my life. We do not seek out these film projects, but instead the organizations come and pitch their film ideas to us. We only accept the films that will, in some way, make the world a better place. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Kapadia and I'm going to be talking about our look lives. So this is a very effective strategy used by many local broadcasts and um, it is both effective and inexpensive. And so here at CHS TV, when we do these look lives, we um, send out a reporter and an interviewer. We send our reporter and a photographer to go out and find a story. So during the period, they go out to campus and find a story, and they film it, they film it during that time, and we come back and put it in our TriCaster to make it look live. And so to enhance this effect, the anchors, they will say, for example, they'll say, now we have Davin live on the run. We have Davin on the run. But notice we don't say the word live, but it does look like it is live. So yeah, let's take a look. To start off the show, we have Davin on the run. Davin, where are you now? What is up, Carlos God? I'm Davin Nielsen, here with another episode of Davin on the Run. Today we're in the cafeteria, behind the scenes. I got my gloves on, I got my hairnet on. I'm ready to do some stirring. Um, you guys will see me later on the show today, so stay in tune. With that, we're going to send it back to Connor on the desk. Now we're going to check back in with Davin. Davin, what's up? What is up, Carlsbad? I'm Davin Nielsen. I am back, and I'm here in the kitchen. I've never been here in the kitchen before. Hey, what's up, Carlsbad? My name is Rahaja Cooper, and I am in here in photo one just to kind of see what they're doing this morning in first period. And I'm going to come over here and ask them one quick question. What is photo one? Photo one is a fun class. I'm Madison, an art student. Talking about the sheet designs you guys did last year, the glint that you got. So can you tell us about the uh, Vans Custom Culture Competition? Yes, the Vans Custom Culture Contest is a nationwide contest that involves 3,000 different schools. I am inside of what is soon to be the stage area for the concert tomorrow. I'm here with Sean. So Sean, what can students expect? going to figure out where Gavin is running on this fine morning. Gavin, how's it going? Hang on, guys. Hang on. Good morning, Carlsbad. I'm Davin Eagleson. I'm here on the run today, and I'm in the choir room here. We're here with Encore, and they're doing something special. We don't really know what they're doing. Can you guys tell me what you're practicing for right now? We're practicing for competition. All right. Davin does a lot of our on-the-run stuff, but um, I'm Colette Moorhead, and I'm going to kind of talk about live and studio performances. So basically, a live and studio performance is when we have a musician like a pianist, someone that plays guitar, a singer, songwriter, come to the studio and perform live for us. It's kind of amazing to see how willing um, they will be to perform on live and on television and everything. So, um, like everybody else said, daily announcements, they get boring. Not every student wants to hear them every day. Sometimes they're really repetitive. So we kind of like to switch up the show a little bit. And on Fridays, or we like to do it on Fridays, um, someone will come in. Like recently we had Cody LaVos, an up-and-coming musician, come in. And they kind of perform on live for us. And it's a fun challenge for everybody in CHSTV because we got to figure out how to mic the guitar, or mic their singing voice and everything, and different camera angles that we can do to make it more compelling. And um, usually the performers, we usually have people come in from our school, so someone that um, we do a story on, we'll have them come on live for it. And, um, but we don't hesitate to ask someone that's up and coming, like Cody LaVos, who came in a little while ago, to perform on the show. We also recently just added a live in-studio um, audience. So basically the live in-studio audience will have some kids from school and they'll watch, um, watch them perform live. So it's kind of cool to see how they contribute to the energy of the performer. So um, yeah, right now we're going to take a look at some of those examples. Okay. 
I'm walking around the Christmas tree. I hit the Christmas party hall. So tall, oh, where you can see every couple tries to stop. I'm rocking around. Cause I'm not getting out. It's a little flat. You fall for me, and I'm not just a way. I'm not, not gonna be the way that you and I believe this tonight. So please don't ask. So I, I, I don't have to lie I don't have to lie No, 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 no I don't have to lie Yeah I'll just stay here yeah. All right, cool Hey there guys, uh, my name's Logan Welsh. Uh, I'm a junior, this is my third year in the program, and I'm gonna talk to you about getting program sponsors by having um, sponsored awards. So, uh, like we've been talking about, we do our stories uh, that get turned in every three weeks, and a lot of those stories are on people who are specifically um, uh, athletes or artists, or they have a really cool hobby. And so when the, we have those kinds of opportunities, uh, we go ahead and we make them the athlete of the week or the artist of the week or the lancer of the week uh, if it's something that doesn't fit one of those categories. And when that happens, uh, we have certain uh, restaurants and businesses in our community uh, that will give us business cards, or excuse me, gift cards. And uh, when uh, those students' stories air, uh, we have a little interview with them in the studio, and then we give them one of those gift cards and say, you're the uh, like Senior Grubby's Athlete of the Week. Uh, and that gives, the, uh, that gives us an opportunity to give a special showcase for somebody who's doing really, something really cool in our community. Uh, and it also gives the business an opportunity to uh, advertise. Uh, and we also ask for a small donation sometimes when that happens. And that, that helps with our program a lot. And people are always really interested to see who's going to get a free slice of knockout pizza today. Uh, so we've got a couple examples of that here. My now for sure. Gianni sees tattoos as a form of expression, not rebellion. Tattooing is definitely not rebellious. I mean, like I said, my, bo my body is a canvas. And when people look at my tattoos, I definitely want them to look at me as thinking that I'm not a rebellious kid, I'm not a bad kid, to just look at my tattoos and think of, think of it as artwork. Like, most people should, and there's nothing wrong with my tattoos. If anything, my tattoos are just colorful, and that definitely expresses who the person I am today. Gianni hopes to continue pursuing art in the future. For CHS TV, I'm Ariana Ricci. All right, hey Carlsbad, I'm Ariana Ricci and I'm here with Gianni Scuncio, our San Diego Board Shop Artist Spotlight. So Gianni, can you tell me how have you started getting into art? Um, I, started getting I might not do it personally, but I want to coach someone and experience that Olympic dream as an American because who doesn't want that Olympic dream and being able to represent your country on the world stage in front of everyone and uh, earning those medals would be pretty cool, even if I don't do it myself, but I want to see someone connected to me um, go through that experience. It's, it's one that I would be able to keep with me for the rest of my life. What's up, Carlsbad? I'm Connor Van Sicklin, and I'm here with Michaela Asiha this week's Knockout Pizza Athlete of the Week. So, Michaela, tell me. I turned out to be fine, and, you know, just four days of not moving, and I was, I'm back out. Josh made his speedy recovery, so he paddled out once again. And that's why he's the CHS Athlete of the Week. For CHS TV, I'm Olivia Sinsaplano. Hey Carlsbad, I'm Olivia and I'm here with Josh Drake talking about how he's this week's Knockout Pizza Athlete of the Week. So Josh, how does it feel being Athlete of the Week? Uh, I feel really honored and thank you um, uh, for this opportunity. I'm really glad. All right. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sierra Vakili. I am a sophomore at CHS TV. Um, I actually think this is one of the last talking points of the day, and I'm going to be talking about um, having courage in journalism. So as you've all already seen, um, we already rolled the clip on our documentaries. We've taken on um, some kind of touchy subjects such as hunger, the Holocaust, and vaccines. And obviously that kind of takes a lot of courage on our part, just being um, a high school program. But um, one of the things we really value here at CHS TV is having a report that's not only accurate and honest, but also um, being balanced. And that's arguably one of the most important parts of our broadcast. And so um, 
One of the things we've also learned throughout our years in this program is that it actually pays to reach out to some people who you think um, might not be interested in talking to high schoolers because sometimes, um, as we'll see here in a second, it actually really pays off. We actually reached out to the director of the documentary Blackfish and asked her to come on to our show and she agreed and it turned out to be a really interesting result. So we have that clip right here. I'm going to read you something that SeaWorld has posted on their website. Through stock footage and video mismatched to the narrative, the film implies that SeaWorld collects killer whales from the wild and separates mothers and cats. Neither is true. How do you respond to that remark by SeaWorld? In terms of SeaWorld separating mothers and their babies and separating families, they do. They do. They do. They do. <laughs> there is documentation. Uh, trainers can speak to it. They can speak to it. We know they separate families, they separate babies, they separate them from their moms. And, you know, did we know cases where the mom's broken open her face to try to get the baby from the other side of the gate and both animals are sometimes put on Valium, like to get that, I mean, it's just documented. I don't know uh, what what they're thinking with that. I um, it's, it's just sort of patently false. <laughs> oh. Okay, so we're just going to show this next video. We've recently started to do a three-shot close where we have our two desk anchors that we, read, that we would regularly have on any given day. And we also have someone else from our broadcast class on to talk about an important issue or an awareness day or anything like that. Or like a woman, like they talk, I think they talked about the Women's March once. And so we usually have that and we just have a little bit of a conversation on the desk. And this really just helps to liven up the broadcast and have a very like lively conversation on the desk which isn't scripted at all and so yeah go ahead uh, thank you olivia now we're here with chad to talk about the inauguration that's happening uh, currently so can you tell us about that yeah, so what just happened is that donald trump was sworn in by the chief justice of the supreme court uh, john roberts after that he just gave his inaugural address the chargers fans like reacting to this change well as you can see behind me a lot of fans are mad and some are sad and uh you know, I think it's going to be fine, though, because all the... We're having another off-campus dance. Um, we're going to be at the Vista Optimist Club, so there's a lot, of, a lot of outdoor space, so that'll be fun for dancing. Awesome. So what's different from this formal than from past formals? Yeah, so again, this year we are... Finding the Shamu shows, and just, fr just uh, this weekend was the final Shamu show that they had. Okay. And, uh, Nick, uh, what are they doing with the remaining orchids? I know there's more, and uh, they just have them free. Like, what are they doing? So what they're going to do with the orcas is that they're planning to... Tori Terry, how big of an influence does he have on the team? Yeah, so Tori Terry is a big influence on the team. He, uh, he's actually an Anaheim Ducks prospect. He was drafted in 2015, and he will be most likely next year. Uh, we've seen a lot of rain during break, and a little bit this morning, and it'll continue through the next couple, couple weeks. And if any of you guys are snowboarders or skiers out there, you guys know that more rain means um, more snow up where we came across his house. That's interesting. So, um, what uh, what did you think when you saw this house? Because it's you know it stands out for sure. Yeah, it's it's quite a shocker. I was really surprised because you know he would he would dedicate a whole house to a presidential presidential candidate. All right. So those are just a few examples of that. Um, to end out the session, I would just like to say thank you on behalf of all of, all, all of us for coming out and listening to us. We really appreciate it. Um, some of the videos we did not have time to show, but they will be on the handout. The link is on the handout that we give to you guys. If you guys still need a handout, there's one right there. We can pass it out after. Um, we will also be giving the same presentation next week in Anaheim for our Student Television Network convention. And just once again, thank you guys for coming. Um, do we have time for questions? Questions? So, um, yeah, I've been studying Teradek as well, and uh, I'm glad that you brought it up. Now, um, the zero is charging you a certain amount per minute. Yeah, you pay, and they have a package deal, um, $300 for 10 hours of HD. It's pretty good, because we can be on the air a half an hour a day and stay on that trip. I was trying to find a sponsor for us. Um, but the zero system itself, I think, was, it was donated to us. I can't imagine what the actual thing cost. But I think live view is 25000 here in America. But the, 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 um, the Teradek 3000 is um, one of the Teradek 3000, 3000 people on the site. 
Mm -hmm. Plus your computer walls, we use that as well. <coughs> so that's great too, if you're getting a line of sight, you can see it, you can get to it. Are you switching using a Teradex system? Are you using a different system? The Teradex, no, we, use, we switch on the TriCaster. But the system comes in as an SDIC. So I, I heard that you um, start studying uh, film um, at middle school. Yes. Um, what, what is the course sequence that you take through the grade levels, and how many times? Uh, is it like one class that you take per, per year, or two classes? I know you have a block system. Yeah. So everyone here has started in middle school, and at different, everybody basically starts in seventh grade, and there's a com there's a combination class for that because middle school is not block schedule; it's every single period, every day, and so for middle school, you basically just so we have two we have three feeder programs and then um, so you just do th seventh and eighth grade usually and then we have to try out to get into CHSTV and then CHSTV is four years um, and then every other day because we have a block schedule. I see and what are the courses things that you're taking for the broadcast? Broadcast journalism I believe. One and two in the high school Yeah. So if you take it from ninth to twelfth grade, so you're just taking broadcast one for two years and then broadcast two for the other two. We're doing uh, what we're doing actually is broadcast one, two, three, and four. Okay. Yes. But we used to be approved as a fine art credit and G credit. We're trying to do one, two, three. Could you repeat the last piece? Pardon me? Could you repeat that last bit we said? We're so currently we we offer two levels of broadcasting, one and two. Year one, uh, and I guess sophomore year they get F credit, fine art. And now we're also G credit, so that's in this one area, college prep credit. And we're applying for levels one, two, three, and four so they can get fine art credit year one and then get G, two, three, and four. And I'm not clear on how that works. Are you taking any other classes that are related, like photography, um, animation, film, <coughs> um, arts? Some, some of us are in digital photography class. Me, for one, I'm in the journalism class, and I... Um, take over the multimedia journalism for our journalism at our school, but mostly the people, the kids in CHSCV are just strictly in CHSCV. Yeah, filmmaking as well. We have filmmaking art or filmmaking English and filmmaking history. Okay, and it's not a prereq. No. no. Filmmaking for broadcasting. Question: So is the broadcasting two is the one where the students are actually producing the show? It's all one. Yeah, it's all it's one. It's all one. Everybody does everything. But, but are the, is the broadcast one then the field journalists? Or do you leave then broadcasting two to putting the show together? No, they all do the same thing. And it's really not a, it's not a video production class, it's a journalism class. We're all, we're all responsible for being a public camera. Everybody's a reporter. And then they learn the hard work. The focus is not on the hard work. So do, you, do you do five classes? I do. I teach the most of the classes in my day school. But I do. We have, uh, I teach two, run it on a two hour block. So I have two different lots of high school students. Today's group of I won't see until Wednesday. I see. So you're like part time at both schools. Then I run to do uh, yeah, 12, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I'm one of, I'm one of the three people. So you actually just driving most of the school. Yeah, yeah it was job security. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know you have to come up. Um, go ahead. Um, I'm just curious about uh, what you said that it runs live in the morning yeah. during a class time. Yes. Uh, so what's your buy-in with the, the rest of the staff in terms of tuning in mm -hmm. is pretty, to take that class time away? It's pretty good. I mean, we when we first started off, we were doing five minutes, and then it got six, and now it can be 10 to 12 minutes. But we're here live on time one for 12 minutes, so we, we do it just for the day. But very good buy-in, and I think that's part of the beginning to keep your broadcast. Make it an indispensable part of the school. And a school the size of Carlisle High School, I hear horror stories. It was a city that nobody knew anybody, and now we can really celebrate this school for 12 months a day. Um, and then, in terms of having your guests in, like getting them excused from their classes and things yeah. like that? We, uh, Terry, want to just quickly we send out passes. Um, they, uh, hope for the best. We, a lot of the times in the morning, we have no idea who our pre live guest segments are going to be. We say, oh my gosh, we Somebody will suggest something, and then, okay, well, who has names? Names of kids, and then somebody picks the job daily, you know, the guest passes, so they write the passes, we have everybody's class number, and then they go out, and then they come in, and then we have our rehearsal, and we have... But I think it happens really fast. The teacher's <coughs> support is fun. Yeah. We don't waste time on the air. We keep it fun, but it's also, it's entertaining. 
yeah, it's very informational. We're from Monterey County, and we've received some outstanding tutoring and mentoring from this program, and we're in awe of you guys and your, your program. Congratulations. Thank, just, thank you. I'm uh, <laughs> curious about the level of funding. Uh, <coughs> Does your district support you? So that's why you need to do Yeah, we're completely on our own. And a typical, typical year, I would get the Films. I mean, that was sort of our, our secret to success with the film. Now we did we did win a big grant from State Farm last year. So we did a couple of years. We competed in a very competitive um, contest based on a 30 second video, competing against the crowds. So, so it's like okay, we're doing <laughs> but, uh, but I have a great booster club. So it's tremendously supportive of parents, and um, and we just do this fun. Are they supporting faculty? Yeah, yes. Are the, is the faculty supportive? Yeah. How many faculty are involved besides yourself? I'm the teacher, and then um, Terry Leone is my, she called my, me and her, her my assistant, which is more than that. But the deal I did is, I mean, I explained the district years ago, typically for a program like this, you have a technician and your teacher. So I'm, I'll do both. But give me some support. And so Terry's 30 hours. And it's like, we're running a business. I mean, we're bringing 130 kids to National Convention next week. So that you can How many kids in the whole program? Uh, 100 in, uh, in the high school program, 34 times 2, 65 or so kids. It's 30, we max it out. Do you cap it? Like, I you cap it. It takes so many people. Yeah, the science is 34. So, <laughs> so, uh, that's sort of so uh, for, the, for, for the F and the G, mm -hmm. um, you hold both the fine arts and the CTE credential for that, for the purpose to get the kids to get the app board there. Yeah, Can I had to do that. I mean, I had to do that last year to get on board because I had to do that. But I had, I had the hours and hours and it came from the business, so I had to do that. And I'll be retired before the, the five years. <laughs> I have a question just in terms of releases because my district, I teach this in the course of my district, and, and I get they don't want it to go live because they're afraid of the yeah. opt out. Yeah. And so, how do you guys get around that? Or how do you, you mean, deal with it? You mean something happening on the air? No, just photo releases of students oh, you know, we in have, school. We have, uh, it's opt out, yeah. we have opt out, right? Not opt -out. Yeah. We have a book that the office gives us, and that's a list of students that aren't, that have not given us their permission beyond live. And so we just don't call those kids out. They aren't. We have to check that book to see if they're in there. But generally, we have we know who is okay with it and who isn't. You do ASCAP and We use um, my new one, that favorite one is Audio Network.com, but that's a paid for song you subscribe to.
until people saw the film, and I saw the Julia Ballas film, but the science of vaccine was a social debate. But it's completely, so that, so that film started in June, 25 kids signed up, we lost 10 over the summer because they had to do tremendous research. And our, our film, the whole thing is we, we always say we start off a black slate. The film is about students discovering something while making a movie. But we thought the vaccine film that would be irresponsible because we had these doctors flying in the field that would get a doctor off for one hour. You've got to know what you're asking this guy. And so we did lose. So the production happens after. Yes, totally. It's their killers, too. That's 18 months. So we haven't done a film for a couple years. It's, uh, yeah, it's a strange year. Is there a ballpark number on your and um, the, the yeah, it's hard to say. The the um, we, we get lucky. The the guy who, who designs the sets for CBC, the news, and for Sports Center, well, would you know it's a Carlsberg company? Would you know a graduate from Carlsberg '74? <laughs> and I said to him, Tim, I'm I just going to need you when we rebuild Carlsberg High School after eight thousand dollars that we've done. I think it was just a donation to uh, us. But we cannot. We we just these guys have never not known that studio. But my older students can appreciate. At one point, the fire, the, the, the fire marshal threatened to arrest the president. He said he threatened to arrest him because, I mean, I said, what can I do? I, no electrical outlets, and yes, we have, you know, that's what I give. So, let's tell the story. How much time is outside of class? A ton. Uh, so much time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so much time. Yeah, it's, you know, it's coming from an English environment where kids are always engaged. There is downtime, and I, I still cannot get used to it, and I remind myself of but their work really begins after school. And they're out. How much time would you guys take? Each story takes, if you're making a good story, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of like dedication. If you're passionate about a story and you want to go out and you want to make the story for it to air for your audience to be able to see it, you put in as much time as you can to be able to make it a good story. Is this your extracurricular or are you involved in other things? Other things as well. It's our, um, what do you call it? It's an elective, so we get to choose to be in it, but we also have like sports and speech and debate and uh, filmmaking classes that we do all about. So, yeah. <laughs> we have sports teams and everything, so it's not like we're just What's coming up next? Where's your next innovation? Well, we just finished a film today, actually, this weekend, called The World of Work, looking at schools and apartment business. That's a, like a seven-minute film. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, nothing on the pipeline. Hmm. Next week is the National Convention. Do you submit to film festivals or anything like that? We do. We won. Mm -hmm. and, um, your brother won last year the All American Great American Film Festival, Anna Jenks Film Festival. Does that, does that help with the funding or anything like that? It helps with exposure, and that, I suppose, in turn helps with fun. With, really, with some of the new technology you're using, Viasat and um, Time Warner, um, how, how much do you need to be knowledgeable of FCC rules and stuff like that that you have to, you've had to adapt to? I, you know, I think just, I think I, I am. We, we always sort of pay attention to that sort of thing when they monitor us, and I think using music that's not copywritten uh, is huge. But as far as like your signals and stuff like that, using all the different stuff, you have to like register as a public access channel. No, we're a peg channel, so we just feed to them and they handle all that. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, just I, I know you for the period, so you can grow in some of your opening. Yeah. Did you have any issues with your history with risk management? They got special insurance. The drone. When we started using our drone, it was sort of a wide open. Now we're very like I flew the drone last week with the kid with me, you know, me holding the thing. Uh, middle school actually. Uh, we've cut back on, on the drones. We're not quite sure. Did you have a tilt shift lens on that? Uh, there's a that's in post. Yeah, that's the final back. Final back. You notice it. You have access to archives. Yes. Everything we've ever done is online. It's the, the website is on it. You got that cash okay. And come and visit. Yeah. We love VIPs. It's very fun. Live guests. We like you guys to come. We like to give you guys tours. It's fun for us. Thank you very much. Thank you.